I can tell you um, that before he died, I still lived in New York City. I was trying to figure out what, what I was going to do when I grew up, you know. I was well into my 40s. <laughs> and there's no limit, man. There's no finish line. Don't worry about it, everybody on your case. What are you going to do? But what are you going to do? It's the same as you, nothing. There's no jobs. <laughs> you know? But, uh, but what are you going to do? I mean, here I was thinking, what am I going to do? I don't know. Let the wind blow me around. And I said, I'll go out to California, you know. That's what everybody advised me to do. And I, and I, it was a good move. It was a great move. But um, Phil Hartman called my house years ago. I didn't know him. I hadn't met him. And my wife, uh, I was coming home from New York City. You hear the gates of hell clang and shut in back of me. <laughs> And uh, I called my wife to see what was going on, and she said, you know, Billy, you, you know who just called here looking for you? I said, who? She said, Phil Hartman. And I said, V, you know, I know a bunch of guys that are very capable of pulling off an elaborate, <laughs> <laughs> an elaborate joke like that. How do you know it wasn't me? <laughs> and uh, she said, no, 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 this was him. He was calling from the set of news radio, and he was on a break, and they were, he and some people were talking about me, and one guy somehow had my number. Yeah, oh, anyone can get your number. <laughs> Everybody thinks, you know, I got my phone locked, I got this thing, and, eh, and he, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> how you doing? <laughs> What's it like? <laughs> IMDB Pro. Yeah, that's, uh, I can jailbreak anything. <laughs> And then I'm going to chop you up and, and bury your pieces in the high desert. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> so, does that answer your question? <laughs> no, it doesn't. I veer, I veer all over the place because I'm just, I'm just nutty that way. But um, Phil Hartman called me and he just wanted to say that he was a fan. And I was stunned. I was totally stunned. And I, and I was like, well... I kind of know who you are, too. <laughs> you know, he was, he, I, he, I loved him. I thought he was the greatest. And he actually said, you know, you ought to come out to California. I said, yeah, people are telling me that. And he says, seriously, he said, I'll help you get acclimated. What a generous, non-insecure person that would say, you know, here's where you should be. And I'll help you. And he did, you know, I mean, he was, uh, next thing you know, I did an M&M's commercial with him. He played this pompous character named Chucky Barr. <laughs> you know, and, and one time Tia Carrera took a bite out of my head. She was another celeb I worked with. You know, just seeing her going like that is always great when beautiful girls, the New Year's Eve commercials were like that. Yeah, it was like all these girls on a couch biting me, and I said, like, cool fantasy. <laughs> it is, it's, it's, you know, it's so surreal. I can, I can experience things from that level. <laughs> what it's like to have your chocolate ripped out of you. <laughs> Isn't that a crazy thought? Not at all. But that's, but that, <laughs> oh yeah, right. <laughs> you don't melt in my mouth. <laughs> Please, not in front of the audience. <laughs> Nicely done, sir. Nicely done. <laughs> uh, but but the, Phil Hartman, um, when he died, they were auditioning uh, him. He was going to be Zap Brannigan, and he died. And so they weren't sure what they were going to do, but they took the chance on my first audition and showing me a picture and saying, what would you do? And I do remember when I was chatting with Phil Hartman that we shared a love of big, dumb announcers from the old days. <laughs> the guys that carried their balls in a wheelbarrow. <laughs> you know, and love the sound more beyond anything else in this universe, the sound of their own voice, yeah? <laughs> you know, and they would add these phony little addendums, you know, that weren't words. It was like hamburger helper for words. Aha, uh -huh, I see, yeah. Uh. <laughs> Because they're so afraid that if they don't fill the air with their precious frickin' voice that, that the world will come to an end, swinging with every pitch. Radio guys were like that, a lot of them. And I thought, how cool would that be? And I, he loved the same kind of stuff I did, and he was very influenced by those guys that had the big sonic reverberating voices. And I always called them big dumb announcers. 
you know, because little did I know I was going to grow up and there'd be a new species of dinosaur. You know, at first there was the giant hulks that just were, you know, they would be extinct really easily. And these were the big dumb announcers, you know. Coming to a theater near you. You know, and I'd say, they're all going to die out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, meteor or no meteor. And, uh, and then I grew up to be a new species. You know, we were faster, we were more facile, we were raptor-like. And we were called little dumb announcer. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but when they, I auditioned for that, and I used that, that radio phony kind of voice based on a few disc jockeys that I knew. But I was influenced by Phil. Because I remember he, he always like deferred to those kind of things, the big phony announcer, you know. It's like, you, you know, kids learned over the years, like when you see these guys, all they have to do is be talking and you go, he's lying. Because it didn't sound like anybody you knew. It was someone roaring at you. You know, don't you wish you were me? <laughs> the 11 o'clock news. You know, and these guys were empty headed vessels. They were empty vessels. They had things to read always. They're the only main important thing was, I hope I never lose my voice. God, I hope I never lose it. <laughs> You know, that's all they cared about. Oh, and this buttered toast hair that makes me look camera ready. <laughs> I actually had a fake picture taken. It's at my table if you want to come over and say hi. It's an on the air sign behind me and I've got like, you know, glasses and I look like the phoniest newsman that ever lived. <laughs> hi there. <laughs> and uh, it's just fun for me. Cause, uh, but, but you know, that, that voice, uh, Zap Brannigan, seemed to be the natural evolution of, of that kind of guy. She's a beautiful ship, all right? I'm gonna fly her brains out. <laughs> Careful, let the men. I've made it with a woman. <laughs> um, so yeah, it was, it was based on this trumped up, ginned up phoniness that I just fell in love with. 